Good afternoon and welcome to our session today. What brands mean when they talk about digital transformation? My name is Martin Corkin. I'm the Managing Director of Summit Media. We are change makers in retail. We're very lucky today to be joined by Rebecca Wilkes, who is our Client Services Director. Summit have worked in e-commerce for more than 20 years and we've helped brands like Argos, Jewels and Three on their digital transformation journey. And today we wanted to lift the lid on a really relevant and hot topic in retail and give some really practical advice as to how retailers and brands can start and accelerate their digital transformation. So we have three sections today. First of all, we're going to be talking about what is digital transformation and we're going to be doing a bit of jargon busting. We're going to lift the lid and demystify what it is as a concept because it's very much in the news, but nobody ever really talks about what it actually is. Secondly, we're gonna be sharing some great ideas that our brands and retailers watching today can emulate. So who's got the, the good ideas and how can we copy and replicate them? And then finally, we'll be finishing with how I can do it without blowing my mind or my budget. It's such a complex, overwhelming topic and it's also an absolute money pit for retailers and brands. So how can we do it with a really cost effective mindset and one that delivers absolute maximum bang for buck? So let's lift the lid. What is digital transformation? OK, everyone is doing it. I saw a report earlier this week saying eight out of 10 of our high street retailers are currently or have been doing a digital transformation. Whether you're M&S, whether you're home base, whether you're Ted Baker, all our high street retailers are currently going through a digital transformation. And if you read a lot of retail and industry press like me, you start to question, what is a digital transformation? Because in the news, a digital transformation seems to be closing your stores and getting rid of your stores and your staff and your fixed costs and hiring people with either digital or transformation in their title. And if you do those two things, you are in a digital transformation. But actually, that isn't clear enough. It's not clear what a digital transformation is and why we need to do it. So at Summit, we wanted to bring you our approach to what digital transformation is and help those retailers and brands along that journey. So to share a bit more information, we went out into the industry to try to find what the very best in class definitions of digital transformation is. So we went to Gartner, absolute industry leader in terms of digital transformation with a wealth of information there. And they describe it as the digital transformation refers to everything from IT modernization, for example, cloud computing to digital optimization to the invention of new digital business models which is fine, still not quite sure what it is from a retailer or customer perspective, but okay. So we went on and we went and asked Deloitte. I went on Deloitte's website. I thought they'll be able to give me an even better definition. So for Deloitte, digital transformation is all about becoming a digital enterprise, an organization that uses technology to continuously evolve all aspects of its business models, what it offers, how it interacts with customers and how it operates. Again, still a little bit vague overwhelming and, and a bit woolly so again one more one more definition just to make sure that we filled in all these kind of gray areas we went to salesforce who described digital transformation as the process of using digital technologies to create new or modify existing business processes culture and customer experiences to meet changing business and market requirements so if you're anything like me, you're probably a bit confused right now, okay? Because actually that doesn't tell me what digital transformation is. It doesn't tell me when I should be doing it and how I should be doing it. And we have a, a, an approach at Summit that says, can you explain what we do to your family? Can you explain what we do at Summit to a child? So as we try to make the complex really simple and transparent, our definition within Summit is do the stuff that customers love online. Okay, so really, really simply replicate the brand experiences, the USPs of your business, replicate the stuff that customers really like that make you as a brand or retailer famous and do them online. 
Okay, you don't need an army of consultants. You don't need to invest millions in infrastructure and enterprise solutions and rework your back end business model. Simply understand your customers. Do the stuff that customers love online. And if you do that and you try to do more of it, you will transform your business digitally. So I wanted to share one of the very best examples of a business who have done that recently. And we're very lucky to have worked with Aldi for a long time. And I'm very lucky because also I absolutely love Aldi. I love the grocery element and I also love the special buys. And you can see me on the left hand side there with my daughter. She's got a big green stuffed octopus in her hands. And that is so much of the fun of Aldi. It is a bargain hunter's treasure hunt. Okay, you start and finish your journey with Aldi. You don't actually know what you're going to buy when you go in the store. I didn't know I was going to buy some pink fluffy welly boots for my daughter. I didn't know I was going to buy a cordless power drill for myself. But I saw the products, saw the prices, got excited and decided I didn't want to miss out. So I bought them. And I'm not the only person who really appreciates that treasure hunt nature. You can see two tweets here, which I think really encapsulates the Aldi model. Is there a German word for the unexpected joy of the middle aisle at Aldi? I'm hearing you. That is, I couldn't agree more with you. And my favorite tweet, I'm waiting for the Aldi version of the vaccine you can get in the middle of the aisle next to the quesadilla toaster. And generally, I don't think we would put that past Aldi. So actually, how do they do that online? They took all the great things of the store the slightly randomness, the quirkiness, the fact that they know you're not going to break your journey and go and look for other things in other places. And they created that same principle online. Hence why you can see the box storage next to the headphones, next to the boxing equipment, next to the beauty products. They could very easily categorize these products more effectively, more clearly, but they know customers come for that experience and that treasure hunt. Whether you're in store or you're online, they've done a fabulous job of recreating that experience. Now, many of you out there will be saying, well, that's Aldi, that's fine. Okay, but I'm not the same as Aldi. But the one thing is really clear. Digital transformation isn't just on trend because it's the latest buzzword. It's because all the data points are telling retailers and brands and decision makers, we have to go on this journey. And the first data point I just wanted to share was this push that's happening from the high street. So the number of customers who are visiting the high street is in serial decline. There is a long-term downward trend, and that has been going on for a number of years. As you can see from 2015 to 2019, it actually accelerates in 2019, and this is before COVID. So fewer customers going to the high street also means less profit for the shops on the high street. Less profit means less shops open on the high street, less shops that are viable, and less shops that are viable means less reason to visit the high street. So we are in a, a, a terminal decline of our high street that we've done so many measures to try and offset. So that was before COVID. And when you consider why customers are actually drawn to the online world, they're over on the right hand side, you can start to see they're drawn for two major reasons. Again, this research is from 2019, it's before COVID. They're drawn for the convenience, the 24 seven, get anything at any point from anywhere, drawn to the convenience and they're drawn to the prices, okay? Because online, you know, it's very easy to compare the prices. So. Our retailers have this closed shop, one-stop shop for customers to come and buy those things. Actually, as the store environment diminishes, our retailers in the last year have done an absolutely fantastic job of starting to step forward and replicate some of those store experiences. And we're really lucky because Rebecca is going to tell you some of the very best examples in a minute. But we need to remember before we have those examples, the customer hasn't changed. Whether you're in the offline world and you're in the high street or you're in an out of town shopping center or you're in your local shopping center, customers haven't changed. Whether they're in the high street or they're online, products of quality that meet their needs. That is still absolutely fundamental, aligned to 
placed in easy to find locations that are convenient for them, promoted and amplified through relevant channels and priced competitively within the broader market. The four P's of marketing are still more relevant than ever, regardless of our channel. And we need to make sure we factor these in with all our customers. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Rebecca, who's going to share some of the very best transformation examples from some of its existing client base and the ones in the market that we've really been excited and, and, and really thrilled to share with you today. Great. Thanks, Martin. Digital transformation has definitely been even more important this year. And I think many brands have really struggled because they've maybe not had the strategies, the foresight, the, the real kind of creative thinking to drive that digital first thinking. So it's really about, as Martin says, understanding why your customers shop with you and putting that online. So I'm going to have a look now about some of the brands and some of the Summit clients who have really focused on digital transformation over the last few years. Um, in all our examples, we'll use the classic marketing funnel so that we can identify how certain brands are re replicating those stages online and it's really clear. So one of the clients that we've, we've worked with in the past and we've helped on their digital journey is, is Selfridges. So Selfridges are really known for doing Christmas really well. So they have their Christmas comes early event in November and they also have these amazing, unique and innovative window displays which really help to drive footfall into their stores. And this has obviously been a challenge this year because of the pandemic and because they're not seeing the same footfall that they would normally get. So they've had to really challenge themselves to think a little bit differently and think about how they can drive that awareness and engagement online. So what they've done is they've created this unique Christmas uh, content hub and these unique Christmas content pages um, that are filled with really diverse content. They're really exciting, they're really bold. And what they've tried to do is emulate what they would normally see in the window display online. They've also taken this one step further um, and they've actually focused on categorizing those products um, in the way that you might potentially shop as you would navigate through Selfridges um, as the person you're shopping for rather than as specific categories as you would normally expect to see. The next retailer that I'd like to talk about is Debenhams. So department stores have had to really think differently over recent years to really remain relevant. They've had a challenging time as people have kind of looked more direct to consumer and they're kind of shopping directly with those brands. The department store has really been challenged in terms of its relevancy. Coupled with the pandemic, the beauty industry has been hit really, really hard. So we're seeing a decline of 30% on beauty products. So Debenhams have had to really think about how they can drive that beauty engagement because they're missing out on people normally walking through the store and engaging with those sales assistants and those beauty experts that they have on each of the individual counters representing those brands. So they've had to really think about that differently. So what they've done is they've launched their online beauty forum, which really tries to emulate that in-store experience. They're giving consumers the opportunity to book tutorials and appointments with experts from those high-end brands. So similar as you would normally go into store and talk to those experts, and now they're recreating that journey online to really help drive the engagement and consideration of those products. Another retailer that we've worked with um, over the last couple of years is, is Pandora. So Pandora, it wouldn't be Christmas if you didn't go down the high street and see a massive queue outside of Pandora. And the reason that people queue outside of Pandora is because of that in-store experience, that try before you buy, that ability to touch and feel the products and really speak to somebody one-to-one -one about the products that you're, you may be self-gifting or gifting for another person. So during the pandemic, we've seen huge growth of the jewelry category online. So we're seeing growth of 57% year on year. So there's a real opportunity for Pandora to tap into that and really cement themselves as part of that consideration phase for the jewelry sector. So what they've done is they've taken those reasons that people shop with them and brought them online. So they've created the virtual try on, which um, allows consumers on a mobile device to take a picture of their hand, for example, as this example is showing, and place rings on their fingers to see exactly how the product would look, which is exactly what they would do in store that they're not able to do right now. The second thing that they've done is also launch live advice. So this allows people to speak to those store experts about the products and really understand those products and bring those to life a bit. So basically creating those two experiences that people normally go into store for online. Similar to Pandora, Clark's is another brand that does a really great in-store experience. They're known for the quality and the comfort of their product, but they're also known for the expert shoe fitting, particularly for children's um, shoes. And we actually spoke to the finance director, Andrew, about this a couple of weeks ago, and he said how important this in-store experience was for Clark's for driving revenue. 
this is another area that's been really hit by the pandemic. People are feeling less comfortable about going into stores, less comfortable about that one to one interaction with assistance. So Clark's really had to think about how to create that experience online and remain um, in that consideration set and give consumers that really good confidence that they're buying a really great product. So what they've done is they've created um, bespoke content and guides online. So they've used their website to kind of create this do-it-yourself um, opportunity for people at, on, at home. So they're basically giving people the opportunity to read their guides. They've partnered with influencers. They've done videos to really explain to people how to confidently measure for your children's shoes and the comfort of your own home. They've also taken this one step further by launching the shoe gauge. So normally you'd have to go into store for this, but they've launched it online so you can purchase it on the Clark's site. And they've taken this one step further. So when people are in that research phase, when they're Googling how to measure their children's feet, this product now appears in the PLA. So it starts that journey even sooner for Clark's. And actually, if somebody's read the guides and they've used the shoe gauge, the likelihood is they're probably going to end up buying that product through Clark's. So when we talk about digital transformation, Argos is probably the number one retailer that people um, talk about, and it's a retailer that we've we've supported for a number of different for a number of years, and they're always thought about as kind of leading the way from that digital transformation. And it's taken them a lot of time, and actually everybody can remember the role that the Argos catalogue played. You know, kind of circling birthday presents and Christmas gifts in the catalogue, and it was you know it was the way to shop, and actually it has been that way for over fifty years. You know, at the height of its popularity they were printing 10 million of these catalogues at any one time. Now, kind of fast forward 49, 50 years, actually by January 2021, they're no longer going to be creating the Argos catalogue. And the reason for this is because the consumer's needs have changed. They no longer want to go into store and flick through that catalogue and write the number down and take it to the till. Actually, what they want to do is do that from the comfort of their own living room. So what Argos have done is transformed that catalogue into an infinite product catalogue online, categorised in exactly the same way as the Argos catalogue was but the digital version and then they've paired that with a full digital marketing strategy including above the line activity driving awareness through paid social and display right through to conversion through ppc and plas another retailer who's also been on a bit of a digital transformation and another one of our retailers that we work really closely with from a marketing point of view is Jules. So Jules was founded by Tom Jewell when he started selling clothing and wellies at country shows and he really understood his customer and really knew what they wanted and what they wanted was that country feel and that countryside clothing but with a really of a twist of, you know pops of colour, patterns, something a little bit unique that reflected their personality. So that resulted in the, the birth of Jules as a brand and they opened stores throughout the UK which were in carefully curated locations where he knew his customers were. Fast forward a little bit and they had the um, launch of the website, which through the pandemic has really kind of come on in peaks and troughs and actually now accounts for 70% of their total sales. So really kind of thinking about how the role of commerce and how important those digital sales are in terms of their whole ecostructure. Fast forward a little bit more and they've now launched Friends of Jewels, which is their online marketplace. So they've really tapped into this necessity of online gifting and created this virtual marketplace, which really kind of emulates that market town shopping experience where you can go to different brands, you can browse different products, which Jules would never have normally have had on their site, but they've got this now in place as a marketplace to really support that crafting and gifting community. And the final example is H&M. So they're really focusing on the loyalty aspect. So we've kind of, you know, we've achieved, we've attracted all of these customers and how do we keep them loyal? And fashion is an area which is really, really, um, you know, it's quite competitive. And we've got those pure play retailers like Boohoo and Misguided who have had amazing growth over the last few years and have really churned up the traditional high street retailers like your H&M's, Top Shops, New Looks to really think differently about the role that digital, digital can play in, in their consumers' journeys. So H&M have always had a loyalty scheme. So they used to um, offer people a voucher for coming into store um, as a kind of transfer the old clothes and get the five pound voucher back, which is great for the in-store customer, but not so great for the digital customer. So what H&M have done is they've reviewed this and launched H&M membership, which now has 10 million, U five million, sorry, UK users. And what that allows people to do is collect points. They get a free access um, to early access to the um, promotions, free delivery, and it gives them a reason to shop with H&M. 
Thank you, Rebecca. Some absolutely best in class examples and really, really effective. There are so many there that I love. I love the Jules one in particular. Okay, so to finish up our session, we just wanted to give our retailers and our brands a bit of an idea as to how they can practically digitally transform. So how do they do that? And at Summit, we have three ways, and we talk about three ways to accelerate your digital transformation. And we want to do this in a really simple way that makes the complex simple and transparent. So first of all, and we're going to talk a little bit more detail in a moment, research the customer journey journey to prioritize the key preference drivers. Essentially figure out what your customers like and then try to do more of it. Secondly, scorecard your digital proposition to prevent wasting budget and leaking customers. So audit how good you are versus your competitors, how good you are versus the best in class and audit your proposition to find out where you could be better and where you should make that next investment. And then finally, prove the value to convince your investors. I think one of the most fundamental mistakes is brands and retailers rush out and they put lots of money and effort and time into doing certain things without the clarity of thought, without the proof of concept, without absolute confidence that whatever they roll out is going to work. So the beauty of digital is the access to the data and the speed to market. So use it and make sure that we prove the value. So if we just consider the journey. So our first recommendation is that anyone who's on a digital transformation journey takes a step back and prioritizes the most important customer touch points in their journey. So ranging from awareness, engagement, consideration, conversion, and loyalty. What are the touch points? What are the steps? What are the reasons why customers pick your brand, buy from your brand, stay loyal to your brand? And you want to be really data driven and you need to use multiple data sets. You need to use sales data, click stream set data, loyalty data, but you also need to get some external data. You need to go and ask your customers, research, survey, quant and qual. And you also need to go and audit the market you're in because it's maybe that one of your competitors has a great idea that means they are stealing share that could be easily replicated and you could blunt that. So in terms of awareness, the type of questions that we're asking with our retailers, what triggers the customer mission and brand choice? Okay, is it an event? Is it a sale? Is it an influencer? What triggers that? Ah, oh, I must go and buy moment that, re that customers have. And how can we make sure we associate ourselves with that trigger? Secondly, around engagement, marketing channels and content are actually driving purchase intent. So what marketing channels and content are driving customers closer and closer to the point of purchase with us as a retailer? Thirdly, consideration. What experiences are most important to your customers? Now, obvious examples. Is it about reviews? Okay. There are a number of consideration points where re uh, customers, as they're doing their research, they're researching multiple retailers. And we need to make sure the consideration points that we have in front of them are absolutely relevant and continue to drive them down the funnel to conversion, where we are asking, what are the value of each of the touch points to the sale and to the customer life cycle? So there is such a complicated mix of conversion touch points ranging from Klarna, buy now, pay later, ranging from home delivery, ranging from click and collect, PayPal, and the list goes on. So actually, which combinations are most important and most financially viable for you as a retailer and for you as your customers? And that's where we want to be able to deliver the right combination to get maximum bang for buck in terms of driving conversions before we consider loyalty. So what are the loyalty drivers in my market? What keeps a customer retained? What keeps them coming back? Is it the curated content? Is it our partnership with influencers? Is it the events and the exclusive prices? So starting to understand across the full breadth of the journey from I'm aware of this product and I'm going to be in the market all the way through to I've bought and I'm going to buy again. What are the things that drive customer behavior? What are the things that we need to be famous for to win that journey? The second thing is 
you want a scorecard and scorecard is a very much a summit word and a summit proposition by that we mean audit scorecard your e-commerce proposition and at summit we have developed a 289 point audit across e-commerce technology across online marketing across trading and across logistics and services so you understand just how good you are and how good your e-commerce proposition is and we do that asking a number of questions and servicing data points like how close are you to your customers how well do you surprise and delight them how well do you engage your customers and we're able to share this methodology and there are winners and there are losers so in terms of our winners at the top of the scorecard with rankings between 75 percent and above you have the likes of asos you have the likes of argos you have the likes of next and you have the likes of aldi all performing really well but even they have room for improvement and down at the bottom of our scorecard you have the likes of dfs you have the likes of pets at home all of whom could improve and there are very clear areas as a result of scorecard for them to go and gr uh, grow and improve their e-commerce proposition so it's really really practical so we're very happy to share our scorecard data so if we scorecarded you historically and we update it every couple of years we're happy to share that if you want to know what the 289 points are that make a fantastic e-commerce proposition we're also very happy to share that with you and you can get that by emailing scorecard at summitmedia.com and we will share the methodology and you can go and do it yourself for your own proposition and potentially in your own market and we're very happy to give advice and consultation on that and the third part is around proving the value and we're very lucky that we um, we, we have been speaking to uh, Organics and, and a contact called Mononikazad there. And Organics actually launched a D2C e-commerce site for the first time this summer during the pandemic. Okay, And they were able to share some absolutely fabulous information in terms of their own journey, which we've been able to team up with everything that we have learned along the way around proving the value, delivering a proof of concept to prove the value. So make a starting statement which you can articulate what you're doing and why. Sketch out your proof of concept design, prototype the idea, try and create a clickable version, but and then build cheap and measure lots. So if we work that through, so make a starting statement, link to customer benefits, business to business benefits as well. So e.g. My brand loyal customers will buy direct from me if I provide them with tailored content and unique bundles delivering a greater product profitability to the business. So let's just unpack that for a moment. So they know which customers they're going after. They've said my brand customers. They know what they're going to do. They're going to sell direct to consumer. They know they're going to win the customers by providing tailored content and unique bundles that you can't get elsewhere. And they know that they want to be measured on the product profitability. Okay, so as a statement, it says everything they're going to do. The next step is to use all the available research that you've got to sketch on a piece of paper a minimum viable product. You should include things like your high level objectives, your high level timeframes, and your high level budgets. But at this stage, it should be a one man job, two man job at a desk, sketch it out on a piece of paper, okay? Because you don't want to over invest on something that might not happen. So you need to just continue to work through the likelihood of this happening. Once you've sketched it on a piece of paper and you're happy with it, you want to move on and you want to prototype the idea. So using trials and free to use tools, things like Adobe XD, Sketch, Figma. These are things where they offer you free trials, free opportunities to use their tools to prototype your proof of concept okay and they are fantastic definitely go and use them again absolutely free won't cost you anything even better if you use the resources that you have in-house before you take the final step which is building cheap measuring lots okay so a digital poc isn't about the build it's not about creating something beautiful and sustainable and long lasting. It's about saying, can I prove the value? So you need to be able to make sure you focus on the results and focus on proving the value of the proof of concept. And that is absolutely the most important part. So just to recap, 
definitely research the customer journey and prioritize those key preference drivers. And again, we have templates and things we can share for how we're doing this with our clients. Scorecard your digital proposition to prevent wasting budget and leaking customers. And finally, prove the value to convince your investors. That proof of concept stage is absolutely vital for reducing the risk and building confidence. So all that's left for me to do is say thank you very much for listening. Uh, it's been absolutely great. Thank you very much to Rebecca. Those examples were absolutely terrific, uh, totally unique and have never seen been seen before as a group. So thanks for you and your team for doing that. And if you would like to know more, please get in touch at scorecard at summitmedia.com for more information. Thank you.